Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish. Welcome back to Baldur's Gate. Here we are, and thank you for being here. Appreciate all of the follows and subs here on Twitch, on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube. But thank you for the likes and subscriptions over there, and also for the follows on Twitter and the pledges to our Patreon. We really appreciate it. And we're going to dive right on in, I think, by heading over to the Cloakwood. Because all of our quests point that way. We want to level up a little bit before we get back to somewhere like Durlag's Tower. And up north, well, we've got places to go, but uh, not yet. Hey, Trance, welcome. Good to see you here. And here we go, just in time to travel to this exciting new area with exciting new squirrels. There's a path here. Oh, no, never mind. It's just a texture. All right, let's see. Where the hell are we? So the Cloakwood oh, is full of wolves. All right. First things first, of course. We gotta fight some wolves. As is tradition. Here, you two take care of this one on the flank. Oh my gosh, they managed to hit Minsk. Unbelievable. So... We've got a couple quests, of course, including the main story quest, but also there's one that we have been hanging on to for a long time. Check it out over here. So we have this, the hidden base in the Cloakwood. That's where we have found out that the Iron Throne has their base. But also, right here, Gurky's Cloak, right? supposedly famous cloak was stolen by a bunch of Tasloi in the cloak wood and we need to get it back we've had that quest for a long time because we met Gurky in Baragost so we'll have to see if we can find that while we're here Cloakwood is a big place it's probably full of Tasloi There are at least some here, we know. <laughs> there have to be, because we have a quest about it. Oh, good, the water textures are behaving. Love when that happens. Ooh, a dread wolf. Oh, no. Okay, sure. That's probably fine. Yeah, see, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Ooh, Minsk did a big hit. What I'm really hoping is that we are going to find a magic spear for Jahira soon. She is still the only one who does not have a magical weapon. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling it. So let's see. Not that one. Uh, I think let's keep going this way. Oh, we can't. Okay, never mind. I thought for sure that that looked like a shallows crossing. Fine. We'll just explore the eastern side of the Cloakwood. Oh, there's a, there's a roof. And where there's a roof, there's a building with a roof on it. Just bears hanging out in the woods where bears live. Like they do. Ah. Y'all, I can't believe that it's 2022. It's wild. That means that uh, we're getting into our third year here on the channel. And it doesn't feel like it. Which, I mean, is good. Because it means we've been having fun the whole time. So, I'm not mad about that. I appreciate those of you who have been here the entire time with us as the channel has grown. 
and those of you who just got here, who maybe are watching for the first time. But I feel like, hey, what better way to ring in a new year than with a stream of one of your favorite games, and Baldur's Gate definitely falls into that category for me. If you have not yet gotten the opportunity or had the motivation to give Baldur's Gate a chance, then now, in 2022, uh, is going to be a great time to do that. Got all the New Year's resolutions you could possibly want. They're free for the taking. Okay, we'll have Jahira pick this stuff up. Go Ryan would be proud of your actions. Good as done. Let's see if one of these spears is magical. Ooh, like the forest. But yeah, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, then uh, check out any of the videos on our playlist and you can scroll down in the video description and there's a link to where you can get the game for yourself. I definitely encourage you to do that. And also, hey, I think we just found a magic cloak. That's what it looks like to me. Okay, I believe that that's everything except their non-magical and therefore useless spears. Let's see if Denny here can identify this. Ooh, the whispers of silence. A cloak of non-detection. Reportedly created for a lineage of the greatest burglars ever to walk the night. This cloak was apparently a success. No record exists of previous owners. Hmm. Non-detectable by magical means such as detect invisibility and scrying. Now that's really good. Is her inventory full? Oh, I guess it is. Okay, well, hmm. Hmm. That's fine. Jahira can hang on to it. Actually, no, you know what? Screw that. There, we'll just let her wear it for now. So now if we need someone with non-detection, we've got it. Now, of course, I shall attend to you know sense. that that's Gurky's cloak. And you have to ask yourself, do I return it? Because it's probably going to give me like a reputation point or something. Or do we keep it? Because a cloak of non-detection is really good. means things like see invisibility don't work on you. As it said, divination spells scrying and stuff doesn't work. Now, on the other hand, how often does that come up, right? How often is an enemy in the game going to use something such as clairvoyance to try and see your party before they get there? Aldeath Session Star. Palin, Balquo. Who are y'all? Hmm. Could this be a hidden base? Let's find out. And yeah, that does tend to be more of a PC thing. So it's kind of like this is a chapter one uh, quest, but they do not expect you to go to the cloak one in chapter one. You could. You absolutely could, but you're probably not going to. And so the thing is, how much experience are you going to get? Like, you have to weigh that against would you rather have the cloak or the experience points. If they're only going to give you 500 XP and 25 gold for returning the cloak, then maybe it's better to keep it. We'll see when we get back to Baragost and talk to Gurky. We'll make a decision then. You there! Identify yourselves! Oh, I apologize for my rudeness. I mistook you for someone else. Let me introduce myself. I am Aldeth Sashenstar. You must understand that at the moment I'm under a terrible amount of stress. You see, my dear sir, there's a group of uncouth savages that has declared their intention of killing my friends and me. I've been holed up in this cabin for several days and have lacked the wherewithal to try to make an escape. Perhaps you kind folks would help a fellow in trouble. Hmm, what do you think? Do we have time for Aldeth Sashenstar and his friends Balquo and Palin? Probably. After all, he's so polite, and we love polite people, right? Let's see what he has to say. Good! Oh, I'm glad you had the sense of decency to help a man in my situation. Let me explain my predicament. My friends and I come here every year to do some sport hunting. Uh, this year, however, a group of woodland savages threatened us with bodily harm if we did not stop our hunting trip. 
being civilized men, we realize that it's well within our rights to hunt where we damn well please. After a few more days of hunting, the crass woodman lost all pretense of humanity and murdered Elbin, one of my oldest friends. I'm sure that they plan to attack our cottage here, so we'd best be prepared. Hmm. 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 A layered, complex story emerges. I have no quarrel with those who respect my forest. Ah, this guy, Seneyad, says, Trespassers and butchers of our wood, I, Seneyad, have come to administer the punishment that you have brought down upon yourselves. Yet who are the ones that stand beside you? With them we have no quarrel. It is now to you that I speak. These men have most likely duped you into protecting their sorry hides. They have most likely not told of the druid they have slain in cold blood. I will allow you to rethink your earlier decision and leave these men to their most deserved fate. Oh, hmm. You do not listen to these slavering wild men, my dear friends. They lie as befits the uncultured barbarians that they are. Oh, look here. This is the first time that this has happened where it has been relevant who we have in our party. Because I've mentioned this before, but this is the first time we've gotten to see it, where characters in your party do interact with the world around them. They recognize other people. They have their own agendas. So it's meaningful what your party composition is. And in this case, Jahira knows this druid. Seneyad, it is good to see you once more. Jahira, you are welcome among us. The trees have missed your gentle care. Will you aid us against these barbaric interlopers? I could do no less. Generic? So, here we go. Choice one. Sorry, Aldith, but we're siding with the druids. They have this great aloe vera balm they're giving away samples of. My armor's been chafing a bit, you know? Or, uh, don't you think you're being rather harsh, Seneyad? We can't just let you murder Aldith. Come now. Why don't we come to a peaceful solution? So, what do you think? Jahira is vouching for Seneyad. So, first things first, you know that if we attack the druids and side with the hunters, Jahira is not going to be happy with us. And we don't like it when Jahira is unhappy. Nobody does. So, we can just come straight out and say that we're siding with the druids. Or... Should we try and negotiate a peaceful solution? We can attempt to do that and see what happens. I'm going to be honest here. I actually don't remember very well um, like what happens if you do try to broker a peaceful solution. I'm sure that I've chosen that option. But I don't remember the specific dialogue options or what have you. But I think that it's probably safe that you're going to get at least a little more detail about the situation when you choose this option. Um, because both sides are probably going to try and defend themselves or recruit you to one or the other. So we're safe to go either way. So what do you think? Shall we just throw in with Jahira and Seniod since she knows him and can vouch for him? Or shall we try and be diplomatic? feel like these guys are badly outnumbered honestly all right let's let's see then let's let's see what they have to say if we try to be peaceful about it oh <laughs> you have made your choice fools now you'll suffer together with your hunter friends oh <laughs> no generic you cannot ask this of me i will not I am asking you, Jira. So we can say there must be a way to solve this without bloodshed. Or, very well, Aldeth, my hands are tied. Yeah, that escalates really quickly. But we'll we'll follow the peaceful route. We saved it right beforehand, so we'll see what happens. Hmm. They should be stamped out before they cause further harm to the forest. But I wish not to burden my friend. Hmm. So be it. These trespassers may leave. 
but I warn you now, these are my protected lands. If you further disturb the balance, the repercussions will be severe. Consider yourself warned. You will not consider staying, Jahira? I'm afraid not. Safe travels, then, my friend. One day, perhaps, we will meet again. Be well, Siniad. Be well. Hmm. Oh, here we go. I give you my gratitude for the aid you have given us. If you ever travel to Baldur's Gate, come to the Merchant's League estate, and I will aid you in any way I can. Take now this small token of my appreciation. This group shows promise exceptional. There we go. He was so grateful that we diffused the situation, he invited us to join him at the Merchant's Guild in Baldur's Gate. So there we are. We got a potion of heroism and 2,000 XP for bringing a peaceful solution. That's not terrible at all. Just tuck that away for later. Are y'all happy with that? Or uh, does that does that sound good? Or would you rather we could load it and we can trounce Aldith and his friends? I'll leave it up to you. Because, of course, 2,000 experience points, peaceful solution, an invitation to, you know, like there may be later positive consequences when we finally get to the titular Baldur's Gate as well, which is very nice. Or we could trade that for whatever equipment Aldith and his friends are likely to drop when we kill them. <laughs> well, it's, I'm asking you to choose violence for you. It's up to you. But I'm happy with this if you are. It shall be as you wish. I'm not going to uh, encourage one outcome or the other. I think we did all right. This way. Let's see if there's a trap on this. Anything? Nope. Okay. Hey! We still got a bunch of stuff here. Look there. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, uh, her inventory is full, but that's fine. As directed. Ah, uh, you have to have stuff in your inventory to identify it. Arrow of ice. Be nice if you could right-click on it and identify it from the container, but more arrows of fire plus two. Excellent. You have but to ask. Very good. Nice little haul. Almost 400 gold back there. And a rainbow obsidian necklace to boot. Very nice. Things are going swimmingly. You have but to ask. Okay, well, let's head back around this way then. See what we can see. I think that worked out quite well. Oh, more Tasloy. Let's give them a right thrashing. Better be careful. If we kill too many of them, Siniad may show up and be mad at us. That, that is not going to happen. They're Tasloy. Nobody cares. He has so many squirrels. Let's give them a right thrashing. Let's make sure Imowen doesn't run out of arrows too soon. And, okay, she's good on bullets for now. As good as done. Floor cash. Ooh. I think that's a scroll of protection from Evil. I do believe. Yes, it is. Do we have... Yep, he's got a stack of those. Good. I shall attend to it in a trice. Yes, thank you. <laughs> for the fallen! Found the emote. Hmm, that's a lot of ogre lawns. I think we'll be fine. We've already taken out half of them. It's probably okay. Ooh, they do hit hard when they hit, though. That's for sure. 
Oof, look at that. Nasty. Very bad. Do not like. I'm actually going to have to heal. Gross. Let's do one more and get him back into the green. Got a silver ring, and a green stone ring, and a green stone ring, and some floor cash, more floor cash, and a bloodstone gem. Nice. I shall attend to it in a trice. That was just a random encounter, because of course we're powerful enough now that we're starting to spawn those kinds of random encounters. The game has decided to roll dread wolves and packs of ogrelons for us. It thinks that that's what we want to fight. And it's not entirely wrong. Oh, that's Cave Bear. Let's give them a right I wonder if there's a whole clan of them. Do you see the bear bit Jahira? Why do wild animals always attack Jahira? That is wild. It's so funny, though. Like, out of everyone that they could aggro on in the entire party, we have one druid. And that's who they go for. That just doesn't feel right. It doesn't seem like it should be correct. You'd think that would be the person who would draw the least aggro. Maybe they're mad because they're like, Oh, I'm being attacked and a druid is one of the people who's doing it. Let's give them a right Betrayal. That's all I can think of. Oop, this is getting beaten up again. These dreadwolves mean business. You think she really looks tasty and vulnerable in that armor made out of a giant bug? Surely not. Surely not. And by the way, for uh, anyone who is wondering... You'll see me, of course, or have seen me if you've been watching the entire series where I've got it set to auto-pause when someone's target dies. Nice. That is... Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for that, Hacks. But, uh, I have it set on auto-pause because I, you know, like to play it tactically, and so as soon as an enemy goes down, I want to tell everybody else what to do. And against trash pulls like these bunch of wolves here, that tends to just be everyone's going to group up and move on to the next target. So, like, it's not complicated orders. Uh, but in a boss fight or something, you know, if there's a bunch of wizards and archers and so forth, it can be important. So I'm manually telling all of them what to do, and that's why it's pausing and going grayscale like that. But if you have the party's AI turned on and you prefer to play that way uh, so that you don't have full control or don't need to take full control, then that is also completely valid. And what that means is that they will then attack other targets on their own so that you don't constantly have to give them new orders and update them with, hey, now target this fella. Hello, Hacks, and welcome. Thank you so much for the follow. Y'all, that puts us uh, real close to 100 followers here on Twitch. I'm just saying, you know. I'm just saying. Let's give them a right fresh. Because I have some, uh, I've got some, some fun plans when we get to 100. It's taken a long time to get here, and I've been anticipating it a lot. Yes. And don't forget to follow over on the YouTube channel and on Twitter, too, if you use Twitter. 
because that's where we do like channel announcements, polls for upcoming games. If there's a cancellation, you know, we post announcements there, that kind of stuff. I want to be here for that because uh, Hellgate London is wrapping up pretty soon. And when it does, our Patreon patrons have helped me uh, plan something special for you. We are going to go back to Titan Quest because, I mean, how often do you get a chance to play a game that's 15 years old or older and then go back to it after you've completed it because it got new content? So we have to, right? We've got to. So we will be doing that, but before we do that, between Hellgate London and Titan Quest, uh, we will be taking a short break because the demo to Call of Saragnar dropped, and if y'all were around for Betrayal and Antara, or if you love Betrayal and Antara, if you love Betrayal at Krondor, if you enjoy some of the older Might and Magic games, the middle ones in the franchise like 6 and 7, uh, you're probably going to like Call of Saragnar because it is heavily influenced by those games. So I'm really into it. Oh, it's Corin. <clears throat> it's refreshing to find other people in this wood. I am Corin, thief and archer. I've been alone in the wilderness for far too long. I wouldn't mind returning to the big city, but I have yet to collect my bounty. I'd share the reward with a lot of you if you'd help hasten the hunt. You interested in hearing more? Possibly. What's the bounty? Good. I'm glad you're smart enough to recognize opportunity when it comes knocking. The deal is this. I've been hired out by the mayor of Baragos to hunt down a great winged dragon that's been plaguing the caravan routes. He's offered 2,000 gold for its head. Now before you get cold feet, let me allay your fears. The only descriptions of the beast have always mentioned its deadly barbed tail. From what I know about dragons, they don't have barbs on their tails. That's something unique to wyverns. So all we have to do is find this wyvern's nest and kill it. Our only worries are if it has friends over for dinner. So what's your decision? Yay or nay? Well, unfortunately, we don't have room in your, the party for you, so... Well, aren't stout enough of heart? I can understand. Not all of us are. No, that's, that's fine, but, like, Corin will be there... In fact, we'll put a little note right here. He's blue in PC, so there we go. If we decide to come back later. Oh, more spiders. I apologize for all the spiders. So many spiders. A disheartening amount of spiders. That's all right. We winnow through them very quickly. There might be a spider joke in that. It's like, like, winnow them down, like, widow them down. Is that anything? Hmm. I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't have a good cadence. Doesn't roll off the tongue like it's a good joke. Maybe it is. feel like it's probably a bad joke, though, but we love those on the channel. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Terra funny. That's <laughs> both, like, T-E-R-R-I and T-E-R-A. Like, extra super funny. Alright, let's go this way. And there we go. More of the Cloakwood. And we'll also go uh, this way. And that didn't unlock anything. Okay. So... We have Gurky's cloak. We need to go back to Baragost and the Friendly Arm Inn for a couple things anyway. Uh, we need to sell some stuff. So, before we travel over here, we should go to the Friendly Arm Inn and Baragost. Let's go this way first. We'll sell some things, clear out most of our inventory for, you know, whatever he'll buy. Oh, Bentley. Like an old car. An old Bentley. Bentley mirror shade. A Bentley mirror shade. When you say it like that, it sounds like an accessory to a classic vehicle. A Bentley mirror shade. 
But we'll grab some rest, and we have, uh, I think it's here. We have one more thing to do that we couldn't do earlier. It might be back in Baragos, but we'll, we'll check. As you wish. Let's get rid of some of this junk. Okay, what we got? What we got? Rainbow Obsidian Necklace. I was pretty sure he bought jewelry, but I couldn't remember for sure. I never can until I like actually get into the sale menu. Skin ring. Really? That's all he wants to pay for that? Okay, well, I mean, that's fine. Oh, I wish rings stacked. That's the beauty of the, the gem bag, that, which of course we don't have. Sell that adventurer's robe because we're not going to use it. She have anything? Still hanging on to those darts of wounding. Those might come in handy, so. Alright, let's see if we have any spell scrolls that we are not going to use. That we can perhaps get rid of to clear some space. Did we already sell all of our enchantment scrolls? I feel like we did. Shield, blind, shocking grasp, armor. Yeah, yeah, okay, I think that we already did. Let's see. Horror. And do we have another stinking cloud? Nope, I think that's the only one, so we'll give it to Minsk to hang on to. I want to make sure that she actually learned it, though, because we did have that whole thing where I forgot how to play the game. <laughs> took some so, took some doing to teach her some of these spells. All right, but she's got it, though. And, oh, one last thing. Do we have any other items that need to be identified? No, we do not. Okay. Good. go. We're going to rest again with full healing spells. There we are. Now everybody's got some health. Okay, now here's what we need to do. We've got to go up here and we're going to see done had enough of this. if the character I'm thinking of is here or in Baragost. There's old Unshi. Our friend Unshi. Love her. Man. Okay, not here. I've done There's Landrin. Is he up here? I don't think so. I think I was right. He's in Baragost. Yeah, okay. That's fine. It shall be as you wish. All right, so why am I looking I for this guy, you may ask? You might recall there was a fellow that we tried to pickpocket a long time ago, and uh, we were not able to do so because, at the time, Emma One's ability to pickpocket was abysmal. Now... It hasn't gotten a lot better, but it has gotten better than it was. Like, it's at least twice as good now than it used to be. Of course, twice as good as 15% was, you know, it's only 30%, but... Contextually, you know, it's just, she's improved. Let's actually take a look and see what her pickpockets is. 50. Okay, that's not, that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. So... I think I might want to go to Baragost and do this first. Now, which inn was he in? Was it the Burning Wizard, the Red Sheaf, the Jovial Juggler, or Feldepost's Inn? So, you have but to ask. there's the thing that I'm not 100% sure about. I can't recall for certain. Don't ask me. But this is worth it because he's got something that we really want. And uh, our quest for Gurky's cloak, our literal quest for that cloak, 
brought it to the forefront of my mind. <laughs> You're a I'm gone. All right, let's see if he is in here. I've done had enough of this. I'm gone. Okay, so not the burning wizard. It's not that guy. Spend Gilman. I've done had enough of this. What is it this time? All right, let's what go over here to the red sheaf. Just because it's closest. There's Garrick's poor body. I suppose we could resurrect him, maybe, once, uh, you know, if we cared to. This way. Once Jin gets high enough level to access that level of spells. I'm gone. There's Purdue. We already did his quest. Lock Luger. I'm gone. Ralio Windspear. I think this might be it, from the shape of it. I'm trying my best not to spoil the surprise, because, like, when we find... When we find this guy, if we can pick his pockets, then it's a very... It's a very good surprise. Okay, not here. Oh, yeah, no, he'll, he'll lie there for a long I'm time. Gone. What, you think they have, like, road crews and a transportation department here in, uh, in Baragost? I shall attend to it in a trot. I don't think that they have the budget for it, unfortunately. Well, I don't, you know what? I take that back, because apparently the mayor offered Corin 2,000 gold for a wyvern's head. So, maybe they do. Uh, but then again, he thought that he was offering 2,000 gold for a dragon's head. And in context, that's not really a very, like... I'm gone. Hmm. Is this where Gurky is, too? Because that's also a thing. I thought it was. Because we should decide whether or not we're going to do that since we came all the way to Baragost. Maybe that's Feldepost's Inn. I thought Gurky was here. Well, now you can see you, you would have thought wrong. <laughs> I've done had enough of this. Well, while we're here anyway. Anything? No? Okay. Back down. I've done had enough of this. Go, Emwin, go. I've done had enough of this. Oogie Wisham. Not that guy. Okay, well, it has to be Feldeposts then, doesn't it? I've done had enough of this. Shut up, Emma One. You'll do what you're told and like it. I shall attend to it in a trot. So yeah, uh, how do y'all feel about that uh, cloak of non-detection? The whispers of silence. Do you just want to keep it, or do you want to find Gurky since we're here anyway and see if it's worth turning it in? And yes, you can, and I have, actually, so. I'm gone. I think it's set on moderate. Emma Wynn's just a very talky I've character. Done had enough of this. I don't know if it's something in her script or whatever, but she just does it more often than other because you can see she's not doing it every time. I'm gone. has to be oh there we go there he is there he is it's Algernon we found him good that only took forever so um yes there are other items in the game 
that will give you a non-detection bonus. That cloak is not the only one. They are just very few and far between, and they're hard to get. So, keep that in mind. Uh, but we can find Gurky and see what our reward is, and then decide. There we go. Pickpocket succeeded. But what did you get? Oh my gosh, first fucking try. First try. You cannot do better than that. Last time we were here, she literally was not capable of picking Algernon's pockets. She could not do it. And this time it took forever to find him. That was the challenge this time. And now she just, she just did it. Okay, here we go. Another magical cloak. So, yeah, that's the thing is um, the uh, the cloak does have an advantage because not a lot of other stuff uses that slot. There are fewer cloaks and uh, belts and boots and amulets than there are things like, you know, body armor and rings. So here we go. Algernon's cloak. This is a very important cloak. We worked hard to get it, and here's why. Algernon's cloak is imbued with magical properties such that the wearer will seem to shine with an inner glow. When equipped, it gives you plus two charisma. You can also spend a charge on it to charm a creature for 12 hours. Now, if you never use that ability, because the charges, I feel like they regenerate. It doesn't just have one charge, but that doesn't matter. What we care about is it has plus two charisma. Boom. You know what that means? We now have 18 charisma, folks. 18 charisma, thanks to that book we found earlier in the game, which gave us plus one. So now that brings Jen's charisma up to 18. Jen is a... Jen gets along with everybody. He's a, he's a fun and sexy guy. It's probably because he's like, you know, he's so loose and friendly where he's a little tipsy all the time. So 18 Charisma, that's a big deal because that's going to give us access to a lot of dialogue options that otherwise we might not have. Now, since we're fairly early in the game, there's not been too many of those that would require a Charisma check of 18. Uh, but we're getting further in the game and it's going to start happening. So getting Algernon's Cloak, if you can, uh, is very, very good early in the game. I shall attend to it in a trot. Like, as early as possible. We put it off because I was sinking all of Emwyn's points into stuff other than pickpocket. Like, find traps and um, open locks. But, if you boost her pickpocket a little bit, it is definitely worth it. So, alright. Let's... I shall attend to it in a trot. Let's find Gurky. Let's see, Feldepost's in... It has to be one of these. I swear I, I thought it was the Jovial Juggler. But I know that they're like on the, the first floor as soon as you go in. You have Maybe it's this ask. one. Oh, well, there's Purdue. Purdue and Lachluger. I shall attend to it's it got trust. to be the Jovial Juggler. So yeah, if you're using this game as or this uh, let's play as a as a game guide as a walkthrough, go don't do that. <laughs> I've made so many mistakes. <laughs> Learn even as someone who has played this game many times, I have made mistakes. So don't 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 do that. <laughs> but uh, just keep that tidbit in mind. If you play the game for yourself, remember that if you have uh, at least you know around fifty in pickpocket. You have but to ask. You can grab Algernon's cloak pretty easily, fairly early on in the game, as soon as you get to Baragost. And oh, there's Gurky. Why wasn't he showing up before? I guess he's just hanging out back here in the kitchen. Um, and it's a huge bonus, especially because charisma is useful to certain classes, such as paladins and clerics, based on their abilities. But it's useful no matter what class you're playing because more charisma, intelligence, and wisdom is going to, they're always going to unlock more dialogue options. And you're speaking through your main character at all times, so that's important. Giving your main character plus two charisma no matter what is always worth it. 
Here we go. So if we turn the quest in, Gurky says, Put that thing away, you damned fool. I'm a bleeding tourist attraction around here now. There's money in that. Losing this old cloak was the best thing that could have happened to me. No more hacking and slashing my way through life. Haha. <laughs> now nah, I've got it easy now. Keep the damn cloak and good riddance. Ah, oh, there we go. See, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. I built you guys up for nothing. And I make no apologies. So, yeah. I've traveled with Cloakwood, returned with Gurky's cloak, and all for naught it appears his misadventures have turned him into a minor folk hero here in Baragost. People toss coins at his feet to hear his embellished prattle, but I swear I shall have none of it. Fie on him and the cloak he left me with, too. So there you go. A little treat for y'all. It does not matter. You always want to turn the quest into Gurky because he gives you 300 experience points and you get to keep the cape. Yay. So that's the best possible outcome. Cities are always so intimidating. There's so many people. You have but to ask. All right. Well, with that being the case, uh, let's head back to the Cloakwood. Now, it's going to take us a day and a half to get there. You have been waylaid by enemies Ooh. and must defend yourself. We're going to have to kill some Edder Caps on the way. Which is a, really a shame only because, so as you can see, they can poison us. Where is... There we go. Slow poison. Yes, yes, we know. There we go. Well, what I was about to say is we were going to have to rest anyway. Oof. It's a good thing we have one more slow poison. What is it this time? And these edder caps. Dang. Uh hmm. My blade will cut you down the side. Oh, dang it. Wow, that poison really got us. Okay, that's wild. Given our level, that four Edder Caps managed to take out a character is buck wild. Let's try that again. Oh, a web trap. Okay. Well, that just means Denny here is going to die, so. It shall be as you wish. You have been way late. All right, by here. Let's go this way. Here. Fuck y'all. There, that'll help. Oh my gosh, he's already poisoned. Poison is the worst. My spleen. <laughs> what is it this time? For for the eyes, for the eyes. Wow. Wow. This is super annoying. Especially because, as you can see, when we load the game, um, it is not loading a new random seed. Oh, there we go. Okay, since he died and we... Okay. I was about to say, like, you know, it's built into the load now. That's just the random encounter we're gonna get. You have but to ask. There. Well, I kind of wanted to finish the encounter out of spite, if nothing else. But, uh, I guess not doing it also works. Well, sure. Anyway, here we are, deeper in the Cloakwood. Let's see, there's... A nice waterfall, and Tiber is here. Excuse me, please let me speak before you attack. H hello, travelers. I I'm Tiber. Could could I take up some of your time? I'd be very grateful if you'd just listen to if you'd just help us, help me. Sure. Oh, thank you. Th thank you. It's it's my brother. You see, he and I went into the Cloakwood to clear the woods of the spider colony that infests it. I know it sounds foolish, but my brother had found the sword Spider's Bane. The sword was created to kill spiders. We, we thought we could become famous, the, the heroes of Cloakwood and all that, but my brother hasn't returned yet. It's, it's been more than a week. Please, 
Hey, could you go into the woods and find him for me? My mother would be so shattered if Chilak were to be dead. All right, we'll see what we can do. Oh, yes, please, search quickly. His, his name's Chilak. Uh, be careful. All right. Attempting to destroy a spider infestation. So there's your warning. There's your heads up. I mentioned this once before, I think, but the cloakwood is full of spiders. So if you don't like spiders... Let's give them a Ooh. If you don't like spiders, now is your opportunity to tag out. This way. Ooh, uh oh. He's poisoned, but more importantly, he's held. And everyone who can cure the poison is frozen. Oh, I hate this section so much. Oh, poison is the worst because, see, look at it. Just look how fast it goes. And there's literally nothing we can do about it. You can't drink a potion or anything. He's just going to die. It doesn't matter what level you are. It is so... That's so irritating. Oh, shoot, did I not save it? I thought I quick-saved after that. As you wish. After meeting Tiber. Dang it. Okay. Well, we'll save it now. I shall attend to it in a trunk. Ah, I know that there are spiders here. I've even talked about how, like, edder caps and spiders will set those web traps out in the middle of the field, and that's why you need fine traps. So, it's my own fault. I've no one to blame but myself. Please let me speak before you attack. All right. There we go. Learn from my mistakes. I'm gone. There we go. See? See how simple and easy that was. Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the eyes. There we go. This will go so much better because we're not being bound by a web spell. Well, I'm sh it's a mundane web, but you know what I mean. In game purposes, it's the same. Let's see if we can get through here without getting poisoned this time. There we go. I shall attend to it in a trunk. Excellent. Gosh, that went so much better. Alright. We've got to keep Emowyn's fine traps turned on as we go through here because, as you saw just then, it could get very nasty very quickly if we don't. Okay, um, let's go north first. Oh, we're going to make them come to us so we don't accidentally walk into any more webs. Dang it, already. Oh my gosh, let's see, it just cured his poison. And it is ridiculous, not only... Now she was finding traps, how did she not find that one? Oh my gosh. See, look at this. Look at the trouble we're already having. This part of the game is in each other. No, it's fine. This way. It's okay. We just have to play this smart. We will search for traps slowly, like it's a dungeon. Which is the best way to treat this section of the game, honestly. But poison, poison is kind of... Um, OP is not the right word. That's not fair. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, but rather, it is, it's just brutal and you do have to deal with it. Um, because even at higher levels, poison can kill you very quickly. If you find something that gives you poison immunity, that's great. And you have to stay on top of it because it is damage over time and it adds up very fast. 
and Edder Caps, for whatever reason, like the the save against their poison is just like very high. I shall attend to it in a trust. There we go, there were two more. Come on. There we go. Go for the ice pool. Go for the ice pool. Surround them. We'll kite them apart and take them out in smaller groups. That will help. And when you're concentrating here on this screen, you don't see the little indicator icons very well, even though they do have one. So you have to watch down here for, like, the green text popping up saying someone is taking poison damage. And then act on it as quickly as possible. There we go. Okay. That, that went all right. That was acceptable. We do need to heal Khalid, though. Okay, floor cash. Floor cash. A spell scroll. Yes, color spray. And a silver ring. Let's see. Our stinking cloud. I think she's got a stack of color spray. Yes, she does. She has a bunch. And she probably should be using them. need to remember and take advantage of the fact that she has all of these scrolls. This might be a good time. We're not really using this Wand of Ice at the moment. So let's get rid of some of these uh, some of these scrolls. Let's make use of them. Okay. Take my own advice oh, here. I shall attend to it in a trice. Since multiple checks are made over intervals when you are looking for traps, it can be helpful to just like send someone ahead, have them stand there after they've gone you know gotten a little bit of distance between themselves and the rest of the party. And they can stand there and wait. Oh, perfect. And they will keep checking for traps while the rest of the party catches up to them. I'm gone. So that way, say that there's more than one web here, like maybe there might be one here or one over here on the way out of the clearing as you're exiting. Uh, Emma one will keep checking or your rogue. Whoever you oh, see, like that. We'll keep looking while the rest of the party makes their way up behind. Tell you what, a ring of freedom of movement or whatever is one of the best items in the game. Find something that makes you immune to poison and something that makes you immune to being held. And that is the way to go. Oh, she almost made it out. She hadn't auto-walked the other way. So you get a saving throw every every round to break free from the webs, and she's just not making it. Her saving throw against paralysis is not great. Well, the web spell's over, so... Now you see why I sank so many points into fine traps, because look at this, even when you are deliberately attempting to... Good on you if you save the day. Ah, you still don't always do it. At least when the enemies are gone, it's like, well, now the web doesn't do anything but irritate you, so. Aha. Also, the higher your skill, How may I be of your the faster you box. find things, because it takes fewer checks and you're more likely to make that check in the background. You must show respect in nature's house. I am gone. So that's why you want to sink lots of points into it. And that's also, that's one of the reasons why I personally have sunk a lot of points into it, is because 
Uh, I don't want too much of the stream to be me, like, standing here waiting on Imloin to find traps. Because I know that that's not, uh, super entertaining to watch. If you interact with anything, you also have to keep in mind that it switches that mode off, your detection mode. It shall be as you wish. There we go. So even if, like, when I clicked for her to go that way, to leave Where the map and just check what was over there in that next zone, that switched it off. It shall be as you wish. It's got to remember. Okay, there we go. The next section of the Cloakwood. All of this is the Cloakwood. So we're going to be in the Cloakwood for a while. I shall attend to it in a trust. Just wanted to unlock that zone on the map for us. This group shows promise exceptional. Okay, well, we've got almost a quarter of the map this way. mapped out, so. You have but to ask. I'm gone. Now, her fine traps, thankfully, is much better than her pickpockets. It's going to be very useful here. You have but to ask. Not walking into that. Because there could be webs on the other side, so we'll let them come to us. Right the spiders are not nearly as bad as the edder caps because, first of all, the edder caps are better. Like, they have a smarter... They're smarter because they have a better AI. There we go. Stumbling over my words. Um, they're more powerful, at least than the huge spiders. There are other spiders that are... Oh, there it is, lol. I'm there are other spiders that are more of a danger, of course. Um, and they just have fewer hit points. Header caps are just tougher. But the most important thing is that huge spiders don't hit as often. Oh, there's where we're going. It's a nasty place. Um... They just, they're not going to hit you as often at the same level, you know, versus your same stats as an Edder Cap will, because an Edder Cap is a higher level, more powerful monster, which means they're not going to inflict poison as often. That, Shelby combined with the fact that uh, the save I've against their poison is also this. lower. And that's good, because an Edder Cap's poison, as we have seen, is much more vicious much more brutal. I would rather be poisoned by a spider than by I've done had an Edder Cap. Yes? Yep. I'm gone. Oof. No. Don't do that. Sword spiders are nasty. You can see how fast they move. There we go. Oof. Not good. That's going to cost us a healing spell for sure, just because even at full health, Denna here only has 36 hit points to lose, which is literally about half of what everyone else has, because wizard. So... This way. But sword spiders in this game engine, it's almost like they're hasted. Um, and that means that with, like, their movement has... Uh, almost a movie monster quality to it with sort of a stuttering, jerking, unnaturally too fast movement. It's like they're at a different FPS than uh, other objects and creatures around them, which is kind of unsettling to some people. I've done had enough of this. Go. One at a time. My blade will cut him down to Oh, and instantly, instantly he is poisoned. After all of that talk, and the spider goes down in one hit. Hilarious. Lol. Oh, and now it's going to rain, as if things couldn't get any worse. Okay, so we're heading for a very nasty part. I want to go ahead and give you all a heads up. 
Um, I have already said there are a lot of spiders in this area. You have seen that there are a lot of spiders in this area. There are going to be more spiders in this area, and they're going to get grosser and bigger and more horrible. Um, and there's some pretty awful stuff in this section that we're about to go to. Um, so I do want to warn you for anyone who uh, like has a fear of spiders or just doesn't like them, uh, you should be aware of this. And, and this is also not a mandatory quest. So there is that. It has that going for it. If you play the game for yourself, you can skip this section. Um, but it is rather unpleasant. So uh, the spider quests not only may contain spiders, but it, it gets a little darker than that. Um, oh, my heart's really not in this. So here we go. This is Centail. Kill the meat, my pets. Ah, oh, here we go. Send those spiders to their deaths. There aren't any arachnophobes here. Or, uh, <laughs> please let us live. We've done nothing to you. Or, hey, wait, we, we've come here to, to benefit from your divine wisdom. Let us speak. What do you think? Shall we just go into it and just tear straight for the spiders? Um, or shall we try to fool this person? We did just get two more charisma, so... Uh, yeah, there are questions and all of them have terrible answers. So, I'll, I'll give you the full experience. You've come here to learn from my infinite wisdom. Oh, speak quickly. So, here's the, here's the bad stuff. Um, what's your name? My name is... is... Sentio. Yes, that is my name. How is it that you came to live in this place? I am cursed. The Archmage John Erenicus cursed me for indignities done to him and his wife by me. I loved John, but now I hate him as I hate you and everything. Spiders. Kill them all. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to give you the full experience. It shall be so I'm going to pick the other dialogue options here. Okay, what's your name? Um, she, she doesn't know anything about the Iron Throne, so we won't worry about that. Uh, this this is the horrible part. So, like, yeah, why are you why are you so big? Your humor doesn't amuse me. Die. We're just gonna fireball's very important here. It's a very important spell. Uh, we have another one. Yes, we do. Dang it. Okay. Giant spider got Emmawin. Who's closest? Oh, she doesn't have one. How may I be of assistance? It shall be as we We need to cure Emmawin's poison. So we will we'll get back to what's happening here in a moment. Um anyone else poisoned? No. Okay, so we'll focus on this. Oh, whoops. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's do this. Because she will continue to spawn spiders if we're not careful. Go for the ice! 
Okay, here we go. Yeah. Both of these editor caps are injured. Sorry if I'm quiet for a moment, I'm concentrating because this is a rough battle. Okay, is anyone poisoned? No. Okay, here we go. And Sentiel died. Okay. Did we get... Okay, good. We got out without any poison, got out without any deaths. Is that everything... Okay, so John Arenicus, first of all, is a character who we will meet in Baldur's Gate 2 later on. We won't go into him now. Um, so Sentiel's curse will become more apparent then, but the reason that Sentiel is so large uh, is because... Um, so, trigger warning. Here's the moment where you tune out, whether you're watching live or whether you are watching the YouTube upload later on. If you are bothered by this kind of stuff, I'll give you a few seconds to decide whether or not you want to hear it. And then you can tune back in in about 15 or 30 seconds and you won't have missed anything plot critical in the meantime. Uh, so, yeah, Sentiel is full of spider eggs and live spiders, which is where all these spiders came from. And she burst them directly from her body. And that is part of her magical curse. So there you go. This group shows Inspiration for your next D&D campaign, if you're running a horror game, I guess. I to it in a trice. Now let's pick for this stuff group. up. The Edder Caps actually had treasure, of course, the spiders don't. Jahira, goodness gracious, path pathfinding, honey. There we go. There shouldn't be any traps. I think that that's it, but we'll... Ah, so here we go. Here's a bunch of cool stuff. There's a fire opal ring. Hmm, unfortunately, Chilak did not make it. Butt kicking for goodness! Minsk will take care I of that grim duty. Try. Now the fun part. What should we identify first? We have a wand. That's probably another wand of ice. So uh, we have a magic ring. There's also a two-handed sword. And it's magical. Hmm. Well, we do have an identify spell. There it is. Spider's Bane. This sword was originally forged by the dwarves of the Orothiar tribe in Cloakwood. They created the blade to help foster goodwill between them and the Grand Dukes of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Excuse me, Baldur's Gate. Wielded by the Grand Dukes for about a century, the sword was eventually lost, ironically, in a fight against Ettercaps and Spiders. Who wields the blade is now unknown, but its recovery would aid greatly in fighting the current spider infestation that plagues the Cloakwood. Equipped abilities protects the wielder from any magics that affect movement, such as hold and web. And it's also a plus two two-handed sword on top of that. Ironically, here we go. His inventory is full. So we've been using a two-handed sword plus one. Speed factor nine, strength 14, you know, 1d10 plus one. Ta-da! Um... Yes. Yes, uh, that is possible. And um, I'll tell you what, we can try that in a moment because we actually do have um, Algernon's cloak. So here we go. This is going to be plus two speed factors, eight. It's actually a little bit better for him. So boom. Now, uh, there's no reason for him not to use Spider's Bane. So, uh, no. Oops. Uh, it's charm creature. So one creature, so it's not just beast. Here we are. Um, so there's no reason not to use Spider's Bane. It is just a better sword. It has better attack rolls, you know, better accuracy, better damage. It's faster. Um, and 
it also protects you from Holden Web. And what were we just talking about? That one of the most important things that you can do in the game is have immunity to paralysis because it's such a nasty status effect. Especially against these spiders. This means if we do walk into a web trap, Minsk cannot be webbed anymore. He cannot be held as long as he is holding Spider's Bang. So we can actually hang on to that and we'll eventually sell this uh, other plus one two-handed sword that we have. Because this one has no downsides. There is no reason not to use it. Give this ring to her. Looks like she cannot identify either of those on um, lore skill alone, unfortunately. So here is what we will do. I'm going to do a hard save here. And then we'll try this for you. We'll see if we can do it. I won't spend a lot of time on it, but we'll we'll see if we can pull this off. Um, there we go. Okay. I'm going to make sure I could access it. It shall be as we wish. What is it this time? Okay. What is your name? How is it you came to live in this place? Okay, there we go. She is charmed. But look, two poison damage from Giant Spider. The problem here, of course, is that because she's been successfully charmed, uh, yeah, the spiders are now attacking her. So this is not, yeah, that's not going to work, unfortunately. All right, well, I won't spend any more time on it then um, because we don't have a, a great way since spiders are largely immune to web. Uh, we, we unfortunately don't have a great way to guarantee getting through that scene. I can, but try. So I, I will leave that for y'all if you are interested I to uh, to discover that on your own, because hopefully you will be interested enough to play the game and give it a shot. So yeah. If you come here late in the game with uh, more resources, of course, it can be easier. Mass hold monster or hold creature or whatever. Or you can fireball everything and then charm her after she's hostile, you know, have to kill all the spiders first. There are ways to do it, uh, but rather than tinker, tinker with it here, we'll just turn in this quest. Chilak. Oh, Chilak. How will I ever tell my mother? I was so stupid. I should have stopped this stupid idea. Such a waste. Such a waste. You can keep the damn sword. It's been more of a curse than anything else. I thank you for bringing my brother's body. There was little you could have done. Yeah, unfortunately. But we got 800 XP and we got to keep Spider's Bane, so... Alright, let's continue back on in this direction. Wrong button. Still plenty of this map to cover. And remember, I want to hear about your experiences with this game if you do give it a try. So make sure that you tweet at me, respond to one of my tweets, uh, let me know here on the stream, or uh, comment on any of the videos on the playlist over on YouTube. And let me know if you pick up Baldur's Gate yourself. I want to know about your party comp. I want to know about your adventures. And uh, if you hear the rest of Sentiel's story, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about it. Because it can be rough to get that extra dialogue out of her. As you saw, it's this finicky. But if you're dedicated and motivated, it will happen. And so if it happens for you, be sure to let me know if you enjoyed it and if you feel like it was worth it. Or alternately, if you feel like you'll never sleep again, this way. because it is that kind of story. How may I be? I shall attend to it in a trice. I am gone. See anything? Oh, I shall attend to it. In ah, of course, a phase spider. 
Oh, goodness gracious. I'm so glad. Look at that. Phew. My goodness. Yeah, you can just have Minsk walk through now because all the traps out here are going to be webs. And yeah, Nivni, it, it is, I think that it's worth it. But of course, that's just like as a, the completionist in me, the storyteller in me. Um, I think that it's definitely worth it. I encourage you to give it a shot. Let's give them a Phase spiders Go can teleport, on. and I hate that a lot. Okay, at least it went down fast, though. 1,400 experience. Hard to turn your nose up at that. This way. But this also shows that it's worth multiple playthroughs as well. So if, like Nivni here, what is it you have uh, played blocks? the game multiple times, you'll get to experience all of that. It is worth it. Going back and doing I've it again. Done had enough of this. Oh! Yes. Hello. I've done had enough of it. Oh. Don't want Denny here to get got by a spider. You can see the two little wavy lines right there, sort of a curving equals sign on Minsk's portrait. Uh, that is the freedom of movement indicator. Huh, you're a queer fellow. That shows you that he is now immune to paralysis and stuff. That's an icon that you want to see all the time, if possible. We haven't found a ring of freedom of movement yet. Uh, but they do exist in the game, and that's definitely one that you want to get on your main character. Um, of course, it's doubly so for us because Jin is a cleric, so that means he has a lot of the support and healing spells that we're going to need throughout the game. But your main character, of course, is also the one who, if they bite it, you have to you have to load the game and do it over whatever it was you were doing. So you have but to ask. You definitely don't want them to get paralyzed if you can help it. Because depending on your play style, uh, <laughs> sometimes running away and leaving the rest of your party to die or as a distraction so that you can escape or something might be the only way to get out of certain death. You never know. More giant spiders. Huge spiders everywhere. I feel like... If I were a dungeon master and I was designing, cannot save game while in dialogue mode. We're not in dialogue mode. Uh, if I was designing Spider's Bane, I would probably also make it like give you resistance against poison or something. In 5e terminology, I might have it do something like say um, it gives you advantage on saves against poison. Or it might give you resistance to poison damage, or make you uh, immune to the poisoned condition. You have but to ask. Probably not all of those. I mean, obviously, if you're immune to poison, then you don't need a bonus on saves against it. But you don't want to make it too powerful. But magic items are generally, you know, more of a game changer in ask. 5e D and D anyway than they used to be. I'm gone. So you have to take that into consideration. Anything? Let's uh, get the rest of the party over here, since Emowen has found nothing. This should just curve back around to where we were. I've done had enough of this. I don't think there's anything over this way in terms of traps. I love this terrain though. It shall be as you wish. This level can be a huge pain in the ass, but uh, it's a very pretty one to look at, in Go my opinion. I mean, they the all are, but this one especially so. 
Hey, there we go. We love what that. Do I've done had enough of this. Let's go ahead and reload. For a second, I thought that was a magic ring. I was like, why am I not wearing that? No, it's just a valuable ring. There's a difference. See the fish jumping? Fishy, fishy. It looked like the salmon or whatever from Age of Empires. Uh-oh. Hmm. There's just an unattended pile of equipment, like a sword and some armor down here. Surely, surely some horrible monster is playing a fun joke or prank. I've done had enough of this. Well, don't see any traps. If none are better. All right, Khalid, go for it. Let's see what this is. Oh, a magic scimitar and a magic ring and some leather armor. From a whomst, you may wonder, and you would be right. You would be right to do so. Uh, can Minsk carry this? Yes, okay, good. And she already has a magic ring. Can she identify this? No. Now that might, from the way that it looks... Is that one we already have? No, actually, that is a new one. Okay. Well, this may be a good time to rest, actually. I shall attend to it in a trice. Let's go up here. Perhaps this group needs not quite where the terrain favors us. And no, what are you talking about? Uh, it's not just a thinly veiled excuse for me to go back and uncover this little section of fog of war. Because it's bothering me that it's floating there in the middle of the uh, map. But we will rest here and anyone who ambushes us is going to have a hard time. We'll identify some more of these magic items. Okay, how many do we have? One, two, three, four. Okay, four. So let's see. Oh, we have a bunch of protection from petrification that we don't need anymore. I forgot about that. Wow. Okay, well, that's fine. Then Actually, this is a great excuse to do exactly what we're doing right now. So let's go ahead and... We will start fixing her spells. <laughs> Let's give them a right Screw fresh. off, giant spider. Get out of here. Nobody wants you here. I am much more at ease in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Lies down to sleep. Giant spider crawls out of the woods and tries to kill him. I am much more at ease in the forest. God, imagine being Khalid. Okay, here we go. Ooh, the Iron Thorn. A cursed ring of slight monsterism. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, contextually, I would be, uh, I would be a little more at ease. But only a little, because now you're left with the, the lingering concern that uh, there are more. Because there's never just one spider, right? Especially not in Dungeons & Dragons. Anyway, this wrought iron band is pitted and stained as if by acid. Between the two thorns formed by the band, a crude lump of silver on its head suggests the image of a skull against a black field. Perhaps the symbol of Merkel, Lord of Bones. So yeah, we've seen one of these before. Back at the bandit camp they had one. It's a cursed item. If you put it on, it reduces your charisma by four and makes you look like a zombie. So, yeah. Jahira's going to hang on to that and keep it safe for us, and we're going to sell that as soon as we can get back to town. Yeah, exactly. Somebody was wearing that ring, and they went out into the forest, and the spiders got them. That is my interpretation. Ah, Ring of Folly, the Discipliner. Off to the bane of the careless mage, this ring was actually used to promote humility. 
Hergat Norin, a Grand Wizard of Narfell, would give the Discipliner to his most skilled and most egotistical students. Through their blind arrogance, they would mistake the ring as a reward for their obvious brilliance and not the punishment of a disapproving teacher. So this basically casts Feeble Mind on you. It sets your Wisdom and Intelligence scores to 3 until it is taken off with a Remove Curse spell. So two nasty surprises. Imagine if we had just put that on without identifying it first. Ah. Be awful. Okay, the scimitar. Rashad's Talon. Named for Prince Rashad, former ruler of a minor principality to the east, this blade and many of the prince's possessions were taken by disgruntled palace guards after his death. The role of the guards in the unfortunate affair was never determined, but rumor has it that all died within a year, slain by this very weapon. Hmm. So, yeah, someone had this plus two scimitar, and uh, used it to take revenge for the prince, perhaps. That was the person who uh, also had the ring. And this is, again, a Wand of Frost. It just has 12 charges instead of 10. But that's fine. It means that we can use them up. We can use the other one. Let's go ahead and... Let's see. What else do we need? Perhaps a Chromatic Orb. Yeah, that'd be a good stun. We'll try that. Uh, what else? We have a magic missile. I'm not going to memorize armor right now because we have a bunch of armor scrolls that we should be using. Hmm. Blindness. That's not a bad first level spell if you can get it to go off. And... Grease might not be bad. that are burning hands but i think we have scrolls for that as well yeah we also have scrolls of grease burning hands is going to be more useful overall here and there so we'll use the scrolls of grease before we memorize it there we go all right oh actually oh no okay she still has scrolls of magic missile that's fine then the Wand of Frost can be a little bit tricky to use because it attacks in a line, so that means if your allies are in, a way, in the way, then you know they're going to get laser beamed. Uh, I don't think so because Grease trips you, but it doesn't paralyze you. And Spider's Bane affects, like, uh, hold spells and web spells and stuff like that. So I don't think that it affects Grease. Let's double check, though. That would be really good. Well, it says any magics that affect movement, such as hold and web, it might. Hmm. So it's giving hold person and web as examples. But it says any magics that affect movement, and I don't remember how they calculate freedom of movement in this game. Um, I think, like, under normal circumstances by D&D rules, freedom of movement is just, um, like, paralysis and stuff, and slow. Uh, but it might work on grease spells. We'll have to test it. We'll have to test it, Nivni. Okay. I've done had enough of this. Well, me too, Emmeline. The woods are full of spiders. We've all had enough. Everyone get the face, spider. Pile on. Ah, instantly. Instantly. There we go. Okay, well, she didn't take too much damage. So that's all right. But to ask. I've done had enough of this. Uh, let's go this way first. It shall be as you wish. I'm gone. Oh. My blade will cut you down to size. Let's give them a right thrashing. 
We don't need to waste that magic missile scroll against these enemies, but... I do want to use them because I've been hoarding scrolls. And some of y'all were horrified by our inventory, so it's like, no, that's justified. This way. Probably should be using some of those resources. Of course, if you've followed the channel for any length of time, y'all know how I am. I'm one of those people who, uh, you know, I have 99 healing what potions I because I might need them someday. I don't need them right now, though. I can do without them, so, but someday I might. So I'm not going to use them. You have but to ask. I'm very much in the style of uh, gamer where it's like healing potions are for when someone is dying and the cleric is completely out of spell slots. That's what healing potions are for. It shall be as you wish. If you can cast cure wounds, you never drink a healing potion instead. I'm gone. Because uh, you're going to get those spell slots back when you take a rest. But you have to make or purchase more healing potions, so that's what they're for. They're your emergency backup healing. They're not your go-to healing that you should use first thing. And because of that, <laughs> I, I wind up with a lot of healing potions. Enough so that I don't need to keep them for emergencies anymore. Oh, we found spiders. And steel on steel. The stuff of legend. My proof. My blade will cut you down the side. There we go. Spider's My bane is really doing its grim work. We love that. Right, that's all of them. Nice. Where's that icon on Denna here? Oh, magic resistance, right. See, there we go. Ring of free action. I keep saying ring of freedom of movement. Freedom of movement is the name of the spell. A ring of free action or an item of free action. Like, that's the status that you get. Alright, time to move it along. War Cloakwood. Oh, goodness. Starting at the bottom this time. Alright, let's see if we can rest successfully. Yes, good. That brings us back to full health, gives Denny here her proper spell kit back, her loadout. And uh, I, this section of the Cloakwood doesn't have as big of a spider problem. So we don't have to use Immowin the way that we have been. Quite the same. But we needed to rest anyway because they were going to get tired otherwise. Gentlemen, gentlewomen, may I introduce myself? I am Eldon Croft. Gentle folk, <laughs> it is a surprise to find such beautiful people wandering these woods. All of you look rather weary. Down on your times, I might say. Why don't we all rest and I'll treat you to some refreshments, perhaps some Burduskan amber wine? Hmm. What do you think? Should we have a uh, should we have a drink with Eldoth? Are we are we feeling thirsty? We did just rest. I mean, we did just camp, literally just now. So such beautiful people. Yes, trance. Don't you just love when you're wandering the woods and you run into a pack of beautiful, tired people? It's definitely a scam. Let's see what kind of scam it is, though. <clears throat> so here we go. <clears throat> I hope you are enjoying your liquor. It is some of the best you can find. All of you are probably wondering why I'm being so generous. Obviously not from the kindness of his heart, you think. Well, in a way, I am. You look like the type to be on the outlook for ways to improve the quality of your life. Well, I have a proposal that could help you in that endeavor. You see, there's a girl, my lover, in fact, who desires to escape her father and live on her own. 
Her father is Entar Silvershield, one of the do uh, dukes of Baldur's Gate. This, of course, makes her desires more difficult than that of the average city girl. However, with your assistance, we could help her escape the tyrannical clutches of Entar. Here's the punchline. Since Entar's going to be hunting us anyway, we can blackmail him for hordes of cash and not worry about our captive escaping. After all, we're doing it all for the sake of Ski. Now, or Sky, I can't remember how it's pronounced. We'll say Sky because Ski is a silly name. Now, we needn't go about this right away. In fact, I'll help you with whatever you're doing until you decide to head up to Baldur's Gate. Just think of it as one favor deserving another. Hmm. You can say, huh, well, sure, we could use the extra help in your scheme. Sounds like it could work. Or, are you always this slimy, or is this one of your better days? <laughs> go find someone else to help in your worthless schemes. Eldoth is a fun character. Yeah, there is no in-between. There's no, like, okay, now wait. Tell, tell us a little bit more about Entar Silver Shield. Or, okay, do you, what about the security or anything? No, it's just, yeah, no, no, that's, I'm, I'm down for a little blackmail, sure. Or just fuck off. Fuck off, guy. Very black or white. All right, well, um, so we can save this for later. We can always come back and do his quest, like, later in the game or something. Uh, we can send him back to the Friendly Arm Inn, if y'all would like to do that, and then he'll hang around for later. How does that sound? And then we'll just continue on our way. All right. I'm glad you're all savvy enough to recognize a good opportunity when it comes. Boop. Go away. Oh, it's a pity. Our time together has been thoroughly charming. Perhaps we'll meet again. Indeed. We've agreed to help with uh, Eldoth with an extortion plan. He wants to, us to kidnap... Here we go, let me... He wants us to kidnap a young girl named Sky, who happens to be the daughter of Grand Duke Entar Silvershield. Eldoth has told us that Sky wants to escape home and would be a willing partner in the scheme. Once we have her, Eldoth will blackmail Entar. So there we go, it's in our book now. And uh, we can always come back and get him later if we like so no harm done in finding out what the plan is and we don't ever have to come back and agree to do it if we don't want to it's nice to have choices perhaps this group needs not quite as much help as I thought there's more cloakwood what did I say like, the Cloakwood's a big place. Right. It's probably the largest um, area in the game other than Baldur's Gate itself. Just because it does cover, like, five whole maps that are all the Cloakwood. Now, none of them are the same map. Then again, all the maps are the same size. Oh, another cave bear. He's come to avenge his clan brother. Oh no, we took two damage. How will we survive? Surely a killing blow, a mortal wound. Can't believe we got got by a cave bear. That that's how we died. It's been a good run, folks. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing this adventure with me. Rest in peace, generic. I'm sure that's how he tells the story, you know. It's just in character. Yes, I've had many adventures. Perhaps you would care for me to recount the time that I was exploring the Cloakwood, hot on the trail of a bandit consortium, and was slain by a single blow to the face of an enormous bear paw. I died that day. God, me having to go out like in the rain or something. I died. It would be good for you to watch your actions while in this wood. Ah, Lascal. You there. I command you to stop so that I may parlay with you for a moment. Oh, what do you want? My name is Lascal. 
and I am the protector of the Cloakwood. I would ask you a question before I take my leave of you. I have a message for those that serve the Iron Throne. Would you be a representative of that organization? No, they're bad guys, right? Hmm. An enemy of an enemy is a friend. My earlier question was just a test. I'm glad to know you also oppose this organization. They have been a blight on these woods ever since they reopened the ancient dwarven iron mine. Well, I am glad to know you. Take this. Hopefully it will aid you against the Iron Throne. Their fort is located to the east. Hmm. We got a potion of invulnerability from that druid. Very friendly. Just click all the wrong buttons first, I guess. Nice. And we have learned that the Iron Throne's fortress is to the east, so that's that other zone that we just unlocked. It's not on this map, I don't believe. It's on the other one. So that's probably what we'll get to next time. Um, I'd say for this stream, we're going to finish this map and then wrap things up. And next Saturday, we will actually go to the Iron Throne's fortress. So look forward to that. And we know a little bit more about what they're doing, too. So it's interesting, right? All this is starting to come together. You see a, see a pattern? You see the plan? They've been poisoning all of the iron in the region to make it brittle. And they have reopened an ancient dwarven iron mine, perhaps belonging to the Arothiar clan who forged Spidersbane. So if they get rid of all the good iron and they have an iron mine, why, then they will have the only source of iron in the region. Ah, another henge. Hello, Faldorn. I am Faldorn. I have been looking for those who would fight for the sanctity of this forest. Evil men have been defiling the woodlands with smoke and waste, all in a futile quest for the metal iron. Would you join me in my quest? I would destroy these men of the Iron Throne. Come with me. They dwell to the east within a fort. Sure. You will help me? Let us find the men who foul our forests. Quickly. Their punishment must be swift. We must travel east to their fort. No. You will travel southeast to the inn. Nature is all. Very well. But do not forget what I have taught you, friends. Walk with rage against all who threaten the Great Mother. So there we go. That updated our quest. We'll mark Faldorn down. She is another druid. And, um... She is a, a bit like Jahira in that, uh, like, yeah, power of the green and all that, but she's really a... Civilization seems far, city dweller. She's a, uh, a fan of red and tooth and claw as well. Oh, hmm. You cannot hide from judgment while within the sight of a shadow druid. All who claim membership in traditional druidic orders must contend with our wrath, as well as all, or as will all that defile nature. I have identified Jahira among you. No doubt she has converted you to her fantastical views, wherein people live alongside nature, in harmony. Such views are weak and must be purged. You have consorted with enemies of the Shadow Druids, and death shall be the penalty. Yeah, so another way that Jahira being in the party affects us. Now we have to fight this guy. The Shadow Druids hate her because she's... Well, she's not evil. So the Shadow Druids, um... Brief rundown, it's like... A lot of people interpret druid in general uh, as meaning that, um, Let's give them a right like, I've done had enough of this. Oh, okay. Well, that was over quickly. Never mind. I was gonna run her away so that she didn't get caught in the crossfire. It's only fair that Jahira gets to pick this stuff up. Oh, he has nothing. Of course, he has nothing. It shall be as you wish. He was only worth 120 XP too loser. Uh, anyway, so a lot of people ch uh, interpret druid in general as, like, they believe that, uh, you know, in 
the supremacy of the natural world, of the wild world, that cities can't exist, that, that civilization itself is a blight on the ecosystem and must be destroyed. And that's just not true. They're about the balance of nature. And of course, evolution is natural. So like cities and society and things like that, they're part of the ecosystem. Uh, but it can go too far if you destroy the natural world, like that's a bad thing. Look at our world, look around us, you know. So, most druids uh, believe in finding and shepherding that balance. And they don't really have much against city dwellers in general as long as those people are responsible. But shadow druids are fanatics who believe all of that other stuff. They are. They believe that civilization is a blight, that it should be destroyed, that people, I guess, should just live in trees and, like, eat leaves without cooking them, and the fire bad, you know, Tesla was a witch. You have but to ask. This is just somebody's house. Yes, yeah, I think that that's a really good point, because there are druids who do indeed serve a deity, but uh, those who just serve nature itself, uh, they kind of have to come up with their own rules, or, or nature maybe gives them signs or visions, but they don't have a direct hotline, like a red phone that they pick up and answer when God calls. So, yeah, absolutely, that's a really good, succinct way to put it. It's based much more on personal judgment and less on divine guidance. I'm gonna take this floor cache... It's totally floor cash. I found it. This this armoire is sitting on the floor, so. Oh. What even is this? Potion of freedom. Oh, hey! <laughs> we needed some of those a little while ago. An antidote. Good. Everybody needs one of those. Um, poison. Jahira doesn't have one. Minsk doesn't have... No, he does have one, too. That is an antidote. Let's actually give this to Jin because it's a physician heal thyself kind of thing. Like the person who can cast slow poison, uh, they might need to, they might be poisoned themselves and be out of spells. And that would be very bad. There we go. Now everybody has at least five healing I shall potions. To it, in a trice. it would be good for you to watch your actions while in this wood. Ah, here we go. Amarond says, Seniyad's followers are well known to me. You travel with the one known as Jahira. Her naive views of society living in harmony with nature must be cleansed from the world so that nature may regain the respect it deserves. As a shadow arch-druid, it falls to me to be the sickle that cleaves your parasitic taint from this forest. There will be no talking, no negotiation. Okay. It is literally your funeral. Oh, he's already badly injured. I'm not going to waste another spell. There. It shall be as you wish. Yes, O oh, omnipresent authority figure. As good as Shadow Arch Druid, but again, he had he was wearing studded leather. He has a magic club and he was worth 120 XP. Yep. I've done had enough. Get out of here. Nothing. Hey, some bullets. And a potion of fortitude. You have but to ask. Cool. Need to go through our potions actually and kind of double check our inventory. Okay, that is a bullet plus one. Good. That's the same kind we have. So it stacks. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot. The club. Can she identify this as well? Mighty Oak plus two. Yeah, he's just, just a guy living in a, in a tree stump. Fashioned from the hardest old oak from the high forest, this gnarled cudgel can fell an adult grizzly when wielded by a skilled warrior. It's a plus two club. No, it can't. No, it can't. It's a club that's the worst weapon. You literally don't even have to be proficient in it. It's... No. Get out of here. Clubs are terrible. Clubs are the worst. In a world where swords exist, do not ever use clubs. 
You have but to oh, I see. Like he's like weaving pergolas or something. I shall attend to it in a trice. He's the guy who decorates the arbor for harvest festivals. Well, the shadow druids have taken more than enough of our time, and certainly more than they deserve. Let's go back out in the rain. It was a dark and stormy night. There were shadow druids everywhere. There are a lot of squirrels here. You know, you, we were talked about there being a lingering concern that, you know, where there's one spider, there's more spiders because any number of giant spiders is too many and it makes you justifiably paranoid or at least anxious. But uh, we're also seeing a lot of wild animals out here in the woods, you know, where wild animals live right of course but once you fight a certain number of druids i feel like i personally would stop being an animal lover uh, just because i would always be paranoid that every squirrel or bear that i passed in the middle of nowhere would be one of these shadow druids just like in beast shape, waiting to get me. Waiting for me to assume, like, oh, it's just a squirrel with an acorn. Look, it's just a cute little guy. It's just a cute, fluffy little guy. And then he just jumps out and Not backstabs you with his plus two club. Oh, some more bullets. A blindness scroll. Nice. Uh, do we have... Yes, we do. Excellent. I didn't realize she had so many scrolls of that. Wow. Huh. Uh, we need to keep using these scrolls. Let's let's go with a chromatic orb next. That'll free up another slot. Yeah, plus two Vorpal Club. <laughs> it just sweeps your head right off your shoulders. One that changes the whole poem, though, doesn't it? Like it creates a much less cool confrontation with the Jabberwocky. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the Vorpal Club went smicker-smack, I guess? Yeah, golf was... that's how they did it. Oh, and now the... now the water textures are no longer cooperating, of course. Now that we have to look at them. Let's give them a right Dread wolves! I don't dread wolves, I love wolves. But I do dread them being portrayed as bloodthirsty monsters in video games. And fantasy settings in general. There go. Now you'll notice we can't go north from here, there is nowhere to go. As you have probably seen on the map, like, because this is we're along the coast, so it kind of is what it is. Oh, you know, that's a good point. A Vorpal Shillelagh. Which, can I say, I love that they made Shillelagh a cantrip in 5e d and I mean, technically, I don't want to say the spell got worse. It got less powerful. But again, things like magic items and magic weapons carry a lot more clout, no pun intended, uh, in D&D. So the phrase walk softly and carry a big stick really rings a lot more, a lot truer. So I think it being a cantrip adds a lot of flavor to the druid class and uh, makes it overall probably a, a better spell. Or I like it better. I won't say it's objectively better, but I enjoy it more as a druid cantrip than I did as a first level spell. Ooh, that's a big old cave. Let's circle around and come back. We'll get this bottom part first. Squirrel! Could be a druid. Don't know. Druids can control the weather. What if they stopped it raining to give us a false sense of security? They found out the storm didn't frighten us, so now they're giving us a sunny day to make Don't us feel at ease. Nature, or it'll mess with you. Oh, here we go. See another one. You are friends of Jahira, are you not? She is of the druidic order that follows Seniad one of the three arch-druids. Well, I do not share their philosophy. It is because of their pacifist doctrines that atrocities against nature continue, like the fool to the northeast that entraps animals and enslaves them for his petty tasks. 
As a shadow druid, I fight so that nature is left untouched. There's no room for society to live alongside. This must be enforced through fear and the removal of the naive taint Jahira and her kind have sown. Whatever. Whatever. Bruh. Do you even have anything? He literally has a non-magical quarterstaff. Well, hey, he should have cast Shillelagh, shouldn't he? Yeah, I love how that's that's so funny. Like, Nivni just... <laughs> Jir is not even responding to their prattling. These guys are coming out of the woods with, a, with sticks and clubs, yelling at her and being like, We're attacking you because Jahira is with you! Ah, kill Jahira! And Jahira is just like doing her nails or something. I don't know. She just does not care, and I love it. All right. Well, we'll do this cave, and I think that's going to be it for this stream. Uh-oh. Remember those wyverns? Peter of the North says, Ahem. Move along, friends. Nothing to see here. Uh, just a humble woodsman doing a little spelunking. Hmm. Hmm. Have you seen any bandits or otherwise untrustworthy people around? Love it. Now, this is an odd place to meet a woodsman. Are you not afraid of those baby wyverns behind you, which are already hostile to us? You just don't know the subtleties of wood and wood-related activities. These creatures are docile and, and, and it is worth the risk. Um, even the darkest of caves could be a, a rewarding experience for the woodsman that knows how to handle himself. Why, um... Uh, uh, subterranean trees can yield the best material for carving uh, uh, ornamental things. <laughs> Alrighty then, we'll leave you to your work. Far be it from me to get between a man and his wood, so to speak. Yeah, that's obviously the best. Op that's probably not the option we're going to pick, but it is obviously the superior option. Uh, subterranean trees. Are you quite sure you know what you're talking about? Like, I'm a little... I've had a couple today, but I... that doesn't sound right. Well, certainly, have I given cause for you to doubt me? Of course not. Everything is just as it should be. There is nothing untoward about me or my wife. I mean, there's nothing untoward about these wyverns. Are, are you implying something? Do your actions not seem weird to you, buddy? Um, not, not at all. It's not uncommon for, for a woodsman to seek the comfort of natural caverns and, and, uh, I, I, oh, the blazes with it. I can tell by your questions you suspect me of lying, and I tire of this ruse. No, I am not a simple woodsman. I am training these beasts to serve as guards, and now that you have interrupted me, I shall never have them ready for the mine. Your presence has agitated them. They will be unmanageable for days now. Perhaps, perhaps I can placate them with meat. Your meat. Sure. Nope. He was wrong. Oh, one of the wyverns or wyverns uh, poisoned us. Let's take care of that real quick. Oh my gosh. Spleen. Yes, yes, your spleen. Let's uh, let's do this instead. Come on! Oh gosh, that was gonna be so clutch, but she mm, she didn't make it. Dang it! Sea poison is wretched. The thing about that is, um. I used his spell-like ability version of Slow Poison and not actually the spell, so the fact that s spell failure came into it and was a factor is kind of ridiculous, but whatever, I guess. Let's see if we can get through this one without being poisoned, maybe. There's one down. You have but to ask. Come on. There we go. Good. No one's poisoned. We have seen this cave specifically so many times. Huh, you're a queer fellow. Ah, uh, there we go. What a good note to go out on. If none are better. 
We got some magic arrows. Oh, he's got some regular arrows. M1 probably needs those, actually, come to think of it. Let's just drop those right here. And those are going to be plus one. Those are going to be arrows of ice. Yes, good. All right, Emma, when anything? No, it doesn't seem like it. Oh, there's literally nothing. Okay, well, that's fine. He just has splint mail. I was hoping that would be a suit of plate, but whatever, I guess. I shall attend to it in a truck. All right, I'm going to have them head over here, and that's where we're going to start next time. We'll pick up uh, on the edge of the Cloakwood, and we will be able to head out towards the Iron Throne's fortress and finally confront them. Oh, we got a lot done. I feel really good about it. This is a great way to ring in the new year, and for a first stream of the year, that was great. It has a different feel to it, doesn't it? I mean, like, it feels weird to say that because I just streamed Hellgate London on Thursday. Uh, but, you know, it rolls over and there's just something magical about it being the new year. And it gives it a different energy. So, thank you for being here and giving my year uh, a great start. I hope that this really sets the tone for 2022. Let's hope that it is, in fact, 2022 and not 2020 Part 3. And I hope that uh, things are great for you. I hope that it's good energy for you as well. And I hope to see you back for the next stream. So next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Got which another. is New York and Miami time here in the U.S. And thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much, CFB. And uh, I'll see you then. If I don't see you for uh, more Hellgate London on Thursday or on Monday, don't forget that Specific Pixel is starting a new Let's Play. He's going to be doing Legend of Dragoon, which is one of my favorite PSX classics and one that he's not really gotten to experience. So uh, stop in for that on Monday as well. And uh, I'll see you whenever I see you. Here's to a good 2022. Keep it positive And... As always, thanks for playing.